review scores are rolling in for the latest mainline Pokemon installment on the Switch, the duo of Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. And so far, reviews are, fine, but a bit lower than most past offerings from the Fame series. Currently, Pokemon Scarlet and Violet is sitting at a 78 on Metacritic, a day ahead of release. You can see how that compares to the meta scores of the past few mainline installments of the series so while again, those scores could increase over time as more reviews come in, as it stands, this is the lowest reviewed mainline release for the series at the moment. It's unlikely this will have a big impact on sales, as Pokemon games are going to sell like crazy regardless, but you may be curious to know what critics are saying, and why these scores are somewhat middling and lower than all past installments, at least by a few points. Among the criticisms Guardian 6 tenths, here, Game Freak draws up an exciting new open-world blueprint for the Pokémon franchise, but appears to have lacked the time and know-how to deliver it to spec. Compare this with June's gorgeous Xenoblade Chronicles 3, which runs on the same console, and it's hard to shake the feeling that you're beta-testing an open-world Pokémon, with more time in the oven, this could have been genuinely exciting. As it stands, this fun-filled adventure asks you to put up with an awful lot more of the rough than the smooth. Games Radar 6 tenths, the basic mechanics of Pokémon remain largely untouched, it's still catching, battling, and training as you remember it, and while that may be enough for many devotees, Generation 9 is a tougher sell for those who need more of a reason to engage with the series, impacted as it I. Pokemon Scarlet and Violet should have been a bright and bold entry that sets the series up for future expansion, but an attempt to modernize while staying loyal to the past doesn't really succeeded in doing either one, and the headache doesn't help, to boot. IGN Review in Progress I just wish this region was the beautiful, expansive, Pokemon stuffed Paul Dia the artists and designers clearly envisioned and tried to present to me, and not the slow moving, muddled, oddly the Paul Dia I've been chugging my way through for the last week. Without question, the common theme here is that Game Freak has not managed to produce a good looking, technically proficient game on the Nintendo Switch here, even as other titles like Xenoblade and Zelda have produced better looking open worlds on the same tech.